Well, as much as I hate to agree with Gary ever, um, not really. You know I like to agree with you, though it's rare. Um, you know, not with the tone, of course. I think it's, it's um, Chris is right that this is really interesting. You know, maybe, I don't know if she's too excited or not. That's a personal decision. But I do think that this is overblown. You know, and, and it's odd. There's been a couple of press releases from NASA. I wonder what's causing this. You know, like the one where they found the planet and said, I would say there's a 100% chance of life on it. This kind of stuff. I, it's really funny because the, the, the premier thing looking for life right now, maybe it's in reaction to this. Maybe people that are outside of the Kepler mission are, are trying to push the envelope or something. But um, is this Kepler mission? Um, I just got a video actually. I should put the link in here. It's a TED talk um, from uh, the Sunshine uh, that I really appreciate. The um, you know following this Kepler mission, I mentioned it before. It, it's looking at uh, occultation to see planets, and it's looking at like 40 million stars. They've chosen 100,000 that they get a picture of every half hour, so they can see. Oh, you know, they're running it for four years. They can see if a planet passes. Only some of the systems will be oriented right, but that should be, you know, a few percent. So it's really interesting, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to find some... Anyway, my point was that they're being really cautious. They're waiting a couple years to even say they think they have candidates to make sure that it's not other things. So it's funny to see somebody that, you know, I mean... I think it's interesting science, but I have to agree with um, with Mandham, with you and Mandham, I guess, since this is a reply to you, um, uh, th that it's, you know, it's definitely sensationalized. It is a lot, I think, the metaphor of, you know, wiring, you know, these cameras come with, with rechargeable batteries that are only for that kind of camera, but you can wire them and it might fry it, it might do other things, but you could definitely put it together long enough to make a press release. And um, and if you check the voltages and stuff, it can work perfectly well. It is a lot like that. And calling it a new form of life, I mean, if it was a new form of life, I want to hear that it's not genetically related to the tree of life. That would be fascinating to say, hey, look, we found this other form of life. And maybe that's why in Man Am is so sensitive about it, because, you know, he's made note, and it's true, that it's interesting that in the history of Earth this has just happened once. Why weren't didn't it happen fifty times and we have fifty kinds of, you know, evolutionary trees from the fifty types that spontaneously? They all came from one. I mean, sure, you could say that one if there were fifty types that happened at the beginning, that one would consume the other. But after all the looking we've done, we wouldn't find some little bacteria that's like, this has no trace. No, they all use uh, you know, the same things. And if you were to build a form of life just because you had different chemical components and you wanted to say, oh, a new form of life, I, I also have to agree, I don't think the phosphorus uh, versus arsenic is enough. Um, there's these seven chemicals, but uh, personally, I look at the basic of organic chemistry. You know, if you had a form of life that was based on silicon, uh, molecules rather than carbon, right? Because, you know, mo these, these atoms are like little Legos. And there's only a few of the Legos that really go together in a lot of different ways, you know, because that's what's go great about carbon and oxygen and hydrogen go together so many different ways. They could be plugged together and all, even just carbon alone. You know, you got coal, pure carbon, you got diamond, pure carbon, pretty different looking things. Okay, so there's only a few, you know, chemical atoms that can be flexible like that because they have enough, you know, of these, uh, you know, Lego plugs, you know, they, they hook to other atoms um, in a, enough flexible ways that you can have uh, chemical reactions that transition that are ordered, low energy, and ordered like you have in biological processes. So I want to see, you know, the carbon and the oxygen, and, uh, I don't think you, you can't replace the hydrogen, but I'd want to see some of the other building blocks changed. Um, so before I'd want to see a headline like that. So I do think it's a sensationalist headline, and I, and as much as I hate to side with Gary just because, you know, Gary, you could be so anti-science sometimes, but the healthy part of that is that they can go fucking over the line and the PR side can be 
it's not science, the PR part of it. So that's, you know, I, those headlines, like, I don't think that headline would, would pass in the, whatever the paper that was published about this, I doubt it says New Form of Life. It probably says something more that, that Gary could handle, like, you know, found that arsenic could replace phosphorus in certain roles. But, you know, Gary has the bigger point that, you know, the systems where phosphorus is really uh, utilized are, uh, you know, not even present in this thing. And, and it's, it's, yeah, it is hype. But, Chris, I don't want to say you shouldn't get excited about it. It's great when we can do this kind of thing. And it does have some sort of subtle implications for astrobiology, just showing how weird things can happen. But maybe not as much as it appears from the way they presented the, um, presented the findings. But anyway, cheers.